a good Tuesday morning to you. This is Coffee Break Reflection. I'm Pastor Jerry Scott. It's June 15th. How are you today? Yesterday I was visiting Bev's grave and I sat down on a bench there that I have placed so I can remember and love. I became aware as I was sitting there of the sound of crying coming across the cemetery and I looked up and not far away there were two people visiting a relatively new grave, torn by grief, sobbing indeed. Oh, I could empathize. Not wanting to invade their privacy, I kept my distance, but oh, how I wanted to comfort them, because that kind of sorrow is so awful. I like being happy. You do too, right? Of course, but let me back up and confess something. I am by nature an introspective kind of guy, and I tend toward being melancholy. Indeed, <laughs> I have been accused of being able to find the cloud on the sunniest day, but I do love to laugh and I appreciate a good joke and I find much in life that makes me glad to be who I am. Most people, I believe, think that joy is something that finds them rather than something that is found. Many tend to believe that luck and happiness go hand in hand. Jesus teaches something entirely different about being happy. In Matthew chapter 5, in that Sermon on the Mount, wonderful passage, Jesus opens with these words, Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Maybe those words seem utterly ridiculous to you. You may be tempted to read those words about as seriously as you might read the lines from that slip of paper inside the fortune cookie that came with your order of Chinese takeout. But I urge you to take them seriously, for they're the words of God. Jesus asks us to think about our world differently than the natural mind does. Jesus says that we need to consider that there is a kind of joy discovered in the presence of God that is greater than the circumstances of the life we are living. Indeed, he goes on to say that until we have felt the poverty of this present existence that is in comparison to the riches of knowing God, mm -hmm. until we have turned off the music and let ourselves feel the ache of a life apart from God, we cannot experience the blessedness that is available from our Heavenly Father. Jesus knew and wants us to know that real joy comes from something other than physical comfort or wealth or good luck or youth or even a feast. True joy is God-centered. When we live through circumstances that turn our hearts to him, when we reach out to him and when we choose to let him reign as our Lord, we can enter into the blessed or joyful life. Here's the heart of the matter, a paradox, really. Those most in touch with heaven, listen carefully, those most in touch with heaven, most deeply satisfied with God, are able to live the richest kind of life right here and right now. Jesus alludes to that when he promises, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness, John 10.10. 10. You might know it this way. I came to bring you life to the full. He's not simply talking about heaven. He's saying when we are in touch with him, when we are filled with his spirit, we can live this present life fully. But if we worship creation rather than its creator, we will not know him in all of his richness, nor will we know the best life. Now, I'm not going to not deny that there's a kind of happiness that we can know when we find love, when our felt needs are met, when our creature comforts are plentiful. Of course money lets us buy fun. Health is better than sickness. Sunshine is preferable to a storm. If you're in a season where you're well fed and you're full and you're satisfied, be thankful. Indeed, Solomon wrote, when God gives a man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and to be happy with his work, that is a gift of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. However, there is a deeper kind of joy. That's what Jesus teaches. We need not lose our joy when life falls apart. We need not slide into despair and depression when the sun disappears, as it surely will for all of us at some point in time. 
we do well as followers of Jesus to pursue the presence of God each day, to live for more than our appetites so that we can know the greater joy of the blessed life. For that kind of joy remains constant. It steadies us in the storms. It is not circumstantial. No wonder Paul could write this in the middle of all of his difficulties. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether I am well-fed or hungry, whether I am living in plenty or in want. He knew what it was to be content. Jesus says that if we are willing to become poor in spirit, to become aware of our spiritual poverty, to be willing to mourn, to let our hearts be open to God in the brokenness of life, we can find real joy. When we discover what it is to live under the care of God in the kingdom of heaven, we will find that our broken state is healed. We will be ready to accept Jesus' love in the Spirit's life. In Him, there is true hope. Here's a word from the Word. I pray it for you today. It comes to us from Colossians chapter 1. We ask God to give you a complete understanding of what He wants to do in your life. And we ask Him to make you wise in all spiritual understanding and wisdom. Then, the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and you will continually do good and kind things for others. All the while, you will learn how to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with his glorious power so that you will have all the patience and endurance you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father who has enabled you to share the inheritance that belongs to God's holy people who live in the light. Colossians chapter 1. Our friend, are you truly blessed? In Christ you are. Thank you, Father, for this day, for its opportunities, for its blessings. Help us to live in the richness of them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day. Thanks for the opportunity of sharing with you today. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. And until then, walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm.